Ladies and gentlemen, please listen up. So everyone needs a whiteboard and their notebook on their desk, please. So tomorrow you have a test, 25 questions on multiple choice, of course. There are charts. So pretty excited. I made last next week's test yesterday, and there's like three charts on it. So I know we're going to see left on. So once we get into the Industrial Revolution, it's pretty much all charts. And we're officially in the Industrial Revolution, so charts it is. So, um, raise your hand if you're an AP Gov. Okay, so for all of you Gov kids and for those kids who are taking the FCLE, yes, mm -hmm. that's all starting to happen this week. Okay, today is the official start of it. So, if you are missing my class or something like that, we will make it work. Is everyone clear on that? I sent out a note this morning. Did you see it? Okay, so I'm leaving today during H period because I have a doctor's appointment for Hank. Um, tomorrow morning, I'm dropping off Henry for the first time. I have no idea what time I will be to campus because I've never dropped him off before. I'm leaving my house at 7, so I'm hoping to be here by 745. So with that being said, if you need to make something up, I will be around tomorrow. I just can't tell you definitively because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and then Thursday is the same thing, but my husband, thank God, will be back on Friday. So lots of things are happening in my house. Not ideal. Um, yesterday, I was putting in makeup work, and I like deleted a ton of shit. Like I, I have no idea how other else to say it. My fingers put 300 pounds on while I was doing it, and I just deleted a ton of shit. If I deleted something from your like LEQs last week, please have a little bit of grace for me. I've never done this before. Like I've never deleted large pockets, and I'm trying to figure it out. So just send me a nice email. I know I'm the moron who deleted these things. I don't know how I did it or a glitch or something. It's been a real hell. <laughs> it's been hell. I don't know if this looks like I got my shit together because it is not. So if I have deleted your essays, it is not malicious. It is not intentional. In case it doesn't sound like it, my life's on fire. That's all I can possibly say about that. So if I made a mistake, please send me a text. Uh, not a text. We're not friends. Send me a message on Canvas, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to fix it. It's not malicious. I'm not trying to stress you out. My life's on fire. Tomorrow, you do have all of your assignments due at 8.30. Yes, we're back on normal schedule, so make sure you have that done. Um, if you know anyone in my eighth period, you can tell them I sent out that message, and it made it very clear I wasn't going to be here, right? Mm -hmm. So they can be working on the lecture and all that stuff. Okay, good. Because I've never sent a message like that before just to like one group. So it's going to be fun. Everything's going to work out, right? Here we go. We also have a ton of content to cover. So my, ma uh, my bachelor's is in the American Revolution. And I'm going to teach it in record time probably in about a minute and 10 seconds. So let's live our best life, huh? No. Here we go. On your notebook, we are starting immediately with the revolutions, ladies and gentlemen. So the heading you need to have is revolutions. Okay, so when we talk about the revolutions, ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple things you need to know. It is entirely based on two major goals. All of the revolutions we're going to describe are based on two major goals. First one is a desire for a constitutional government. Who can raise your hand and tell me what a constitutional government is? What do you got, Ben? Government based on a document of law. <laughs> sort of, yeah, okay. So, um, and no AP Gov kids volunteering for this? Haven't we got to this in AP Gov? What? No, I'm not even saying that. Yeah. So the first semester is government, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't, it's well, we like, haven't done that yet. yeah, we haven't done what the hell are you doing? You don't really do anything. We're in like yeah. week 11. I don't care. I don't care. Hello, let me teach AP Gov kids some AP Gov. Constitutional government is when there is a body of legislators elected by the people who make the laws for the people. So, an elected body of people, legislators, are elected and they create the laws for everyone. That's a constitutional government. These laws are stated clearly and are held to everyone. Okay, 
right? Because keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a monarchy, can a king wake up and decide everyone has to wear purple today? No. Tomorrow, can he change his mind? Yes, that's a monarchy, it's unpredictable. A constitutional government is created by the people, for the people, and it is clearly stated and applies to everyone. That is the big difference. Doesn't that have some real lure to it? Looks pretty good, especially when you're dealing with these tyrannical kings and stuff. Second thing is a desire for a democratic process. People want to have a say in their government. That's what we talk about when we talk about democratic processes. People want to have a say in their government. Okay? What that means, they want to vote. Okay? <coughs> they want to be able to change laws as they become unfit, and they need to be able to add laws as new problems arise. Okay, so that's the changing the evolution, the ebb and the flow. Can you see how all of these things have been embedded nicely here in the United States? Is it perfect? Hell no. Okay, however, we're making moves. Here we go. So your first revolution is the American Revolution. You need to know it's the first. There are three major ones that you do need to know in order. American Revolution is the first. You need to know it starts in 1776. And you all, do you know, that, have you covered that for me? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, American Revolution, it's first starts in 1776. It's in based entirely on enlightenment ideals and wanting to rid uh, rid themselves of mercantilism. They want capitalism. Are we going to say pro-capitalism? That's what I'm trying to do. So you need to know the American Revolution is anti-mercantilism, pro-capitalism. Because who's running the American Revolution? Poor people or rich people? Rich people. Rich people. <laughs> okay. So they have a vested interest. Okay. So causes. You need to know. The quote, no taxation without representation. You need to know it. That is a huge rallying cry. And you need, need, need to be able to identify it quickly once it pops up. Okay, so no taxation without representation. Now, you do need to know that they believe themselves British, okay? All of the colonies were proud British people. So when they're not getting the representation of no taxation on representation, they feel like they have been um, wronged. Okay. So the cause is they are not represented in Parliament, which is wrong because in 1215 we had the Magna Carta, and believe me, they really do believe they are British citizens. Okay. So Magna Carta 1215. If you wanted to reference it in an essay, that would be a beautiful. Thing that goes against the fact that they feel like they were entitled to these rights. Second cause, it's a really long way between the colonies and England. And the further you are away, the more independence you want. Can we agree? So they felt the distance, the long distance, gave them more rights. It's just like when you get to college, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can all agree. When you move out and you go to college, okay, are you looking forward to moving back home after you graduate college? Or are you like, as soon as you get that taste of freedom, you're like, hell no. Exactly. Okay, same thing. Colonies had their independence, and then they're like, wait, we could do this like full time? And that's why I don't want to break away because the distance is so much. What do you got, Ben? 1215, and that creates the um, representation in Parliament. So by the fact that they were not being represented in Parliament, uh, voided their Magna Carta rights. And as British citizens, they had the right to be uh, president. Okay, so important documents. In every revolution, there's an important document. Your important document is the Declaration of Independence. It is signed in 1776 by, um, of course, our Continental Congress, but you need to know it was written by Jefferson. Okay, it was written by Jefferson, uh, edited by Franklin and Madison. I don't need you to know Franklin and Madison, but I want you to know that I know Franklin and Madison. Okay, so you do need to know the document is riddled with enlightenment ideas and most of it's John Locke. Because who is the most influential of the enlightenment thinkers? 
John Locke, who was Thomas Jefferson mentally in love with? John Locke, John Locke which is why most of our government is based on? John Locke. Thomas Jefferson loved him. Okay, outcome. Okay, we gain our independence in 1783. Officially. You don't need to know this, but it's the Treaty of Paris that is signed. We officially end the war in eight, uh, 1781, but the Peace of Paris is signed in 1783. You don't need to know that, but there you are. Okay, so we gain our independence. Uh, we're also, France, you do need to know France is a massive ally. Which is that going to help France or hurt France? Uh, yeah, it does hurt France. Really bad, actually. Um, so France is a huge ally, and you need to know we are going to create a constitutional republic in 1789. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our four-year school. Was it amazing? <sighs> All right. French Revolution! Dun, 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 dun! Has way more because this shit gets off the rails real quick. Okay, French Revolution, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know it is the second revolution. So the first one is the American, the second one is French. The French Revolution starts in 1789. You need to know that. So, 1789 is when the French Revolution began. You do need to know it is based on Enlightenment ideals, because most of your Enlightenment thinkers are French. French. So they wanted to implement their own homegrown ideas, so it's based on Enlightenment ideas. Of course, you also need to understand that it is a huge wealth gap. There is a huge wealth gap. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if there's a huge wealth gap, is that good or bad for average people? Oh, it is absolutely um, completely destructive to what you would think of as a societal growth. There's very little future, um, and uh, it's very, very, very punishing. Now, here in the United States, we are growing in our wealth gap, which is leading to a lot of frustration even before the pandemic, okay? So, wealth gaps caused huge societal problems. The French have one of the biggest in history at this time. Ben. Um, why is that hard to um, because if you don't have a future, Ben, you know that no matter how hard you work and go to school, do everything, and you're still not going to get out of debt, you're still not going to be able to own your own house, you're never going to be completely independent and live the life you want to do. Are you going to continue working hard or are you going to start causing problems? Causing problems. And then causing problems is going to cause more problems for other people. And then all of a sudden you have uh, massive criminal activity. Uh, and all of these other components that it's going to cause terrible, terrible issues. Uh, you know, we'll get into that with the Industrial Revolution because it's going to happen there for a while too. All right, causes, ladies and gentlemen, causes are overspent on wars. The French are going to overspend on wars. So you do need to make the connection that the U.S. Revolution is part of that. Okay, that's the final straw that breaks the French, okay? So they're overspent on wars specifically and including the American Revolution and, and millions and millions of dollars. Second is something called the Estates General, okay? The Estates General is ineffective and perpetuates the monarchy. So make that note and I'm gonna explain it to you but right, make that note. So it is ineffective and perpetuates the monarchy. The monarchy's abuses of the people. Make that note. Okay, let me explain to you the Estates General. The Estates General was originally created in like 15, like 80 something. Okay, it was supposed to be a way for the people to have a say in the government. Okay, sounds good, right? Well, the Estates General has only been called upon three times in history. So how effective is that? It's a complete sham. In the Estates General, you should write this part down, 
The Estates General only has three votes. The first vote is for the king. The second vote is for the nobility. And the third vote is for the common man. Next to common man, I would write 97% of the population. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just looking at that math, who do you think loses all the time? The 97% of people. Because if there's only three votes, the king and the nobility are always going to vote it together, so it's always a two to one. Who loses? The common man. So 97% of the population lose every single time. Okay, so there is problems rising in France. People are pissed. So Louis the 16th calls together the Estates General. You should know it's Louis the 16th. He's the last king of France. Okay, Louis the 16th calls upon the Estates General. Okay, and he asks the Estates General if I can increase taxes. Well, guess what the Estates General votes? Yes! So Louis XVI is like, okay, perfect, I'll increase taxes. Well, that is what breaks the back of the French people. The French people are going to attack the Bastille, which is over here. Okay, so the causes. Okay? French people to attack the Bastille. B I B A S T I L L E. Okay. Now, underneath that, write war. So we have the causes, now we're going to war. Hmm? I'm getting there, okay? So, actually, can you cross off war and write important documents? <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need to feel pretty good about it. Okay, so your important document, ladies and gentlemen, is called your Declaration of Rights of Man, which is right here. Declaration of Rights of Man. Oh my God, what does it sound like? Well, that's written in about 20 years later. Declaration of Independence. It is exactly mirroring the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson is credited with parts of the Declaration of the Rights of Man. Also, Thomas Jefferson was in France for a very long time and was very influential on the crafters of the Declaration of Rights of Man. Um, they, if you read them, they read very similar because they're based on the same similar ideas and they worship Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Jefferson really loved the Van Gogh attention. So, you do need to know that it was signed in 1789 and it declared rights for all men. That's a big deal for men. For men. Let's not get wild here. Um, including people of different colors which is a huge deal. And it's not just landowning people, because here in the United States, are we inviting everyone to uh, the voting party? No, we obviously aren't inviting women, because that's crazy talk. And we're obviously not inviting black people because we're enslaving them still, so that's crazy talk. And we're not inviting poor white people. Ew. We're only inviting wealthy <laughs> white people to vote. In France, they actually do open it up to more people, so kudos to them. Still discriminating against a ton of people. But we'll get to that later. Okay, so that's your important document, 1789. So war is your next heading. Okay, starts in 1789. Okay, the French people will storm the Bastille. You should know that it's a political prison. Okay, the Arc de Triomphe, have you seen that in France? on uh, that really that really beautiful boulevard with the huge arch. That's where it used to be. They knocked it down and they built the Arc de Triomphe uh, for it. It's the Champs, no, I forget the name of it. Champs, Champs Elysees or whatever it is. All right, so the people take to the streets. So the average citizens are the ones fighting in the French. This is perpetuated by the average citizen. So the people took to the streets and the king surrenders. This is an urban war, ladies and gentlemen. The American Revolution, is it an urban war? No, it's fought out in the fields and stuff like that. Yeah, it goes through some cities. It's in New York for a while, but it's mostly fought out into the fields. This is like fought in the heart of France, for God's sake. What do you got, John? How long did it take for the French to surrender? 
Um, a couple weeks. He's gonna surrender because he's like, okay, let's like be reasonable about this. Because the idea of killing a king is just like not even a thing. So the idea that Louis the Sixteenth thought he was going to be killed, he thought he was gonna have to pay a bunch of fines and say, my bad. Uh, but the idea of him getting executed at the end of this thing was just not an option. Alex. What's the Bastille? The Bastille is a political prison. It's this big, nasty, really, really super ugly building that they used to lock away people who said, like Voltaire spent a ton of time there. Montesquieu spent like a third of his life there. You know, that's where they got locked up and stuff like that. Okay, so the king is going to surrender to the new National Assembly. Oh my God, what is the name of the legislative body in France today? The yeah, National Assembly. Yeah, hopefully you'll get to that in comparative government. Maybe. Okay, well, it's called the National Assembly. There you go on your AP exam. Okay, so the National Assembly, which is a representation of the people. It is actually real, it's what they use in France today. Who is the Prime Minister of the National Assembly today? Macron. Emmanuel Macron. Who's the Prime Minister of France? Like, can you step out of your box at all? Okay, anyway. He's like good looking, and he married like scandalized wife, the whole thing, like the whole thing is bizarre. Like he married his like eighth grade school teacher. Yeah, bizarre, like so French, so French. Anyway, off topic. All right, the new National Assembly, which is a representation of the, of the people, they issue the Declaration of Rights of Man once they have the king in person. Um, however, the king refuses limited power. So, the National Assembly, they, he surrenders to the National Assembly, they issue the Declaration of Rights of Man, and the king's like, hell no am I losing power, no. I'll, you know, I'll do this, but I'm not. So, what happens is, they kill him. And the National Assembly, officially, under the French Republic. They killed uh, Louis XVI. That had him. Uh, yeah, but yeah, and they kill the kids too. You gotta kill the kids, guys. You have to kill the kids. If there's anything I'm gonna teach you this year, you gotta kill the kids. Because if you don't kill the kids, what are they gonna do? They're gonna come back and avenge you, and it's gonna cause more chaos. So, in every time that you overthrow a king, you gotta kill the kids. You don't want them to be martyrs and stuff. Come on, now. All right. <coughs> So the king refuses power, they execute him and create, you need to note this, create the French uh, Republic. Okay, so the second stage. So we have the causes, we have the document, we have the war, and now we're in the French Republic. Okay, so for the French Republic, you need to know it is controlled by what we call the Jacobians. Are in power, and they are radicals. Okay, what do I mean when I say radicals? What's the difference between a radical and a moderate? They're more extreme. When we say radicals, we're talking people on the complete opposite side. Like, um, okay, so when we're talking about the Jacobians, they're in power and they're radical. They are going to start the reign of terror. Reign of terror. They are going to execute anyone who opposes a French Republic. Okay, so anyone who opposes. If Abby got in passing and says, oh my God, this is chaos, Ava's going to report her, and guess who's going to be on the guillotine the next day? Mm -hmm. Abby. So it originally starts with this, like, the king's already dead. They're going to kill him off real quick. And then they start killing the nobility. <laughs> then they start turning on themselves. Okay, and that is the big, big issue. Okay, so they're going to kill thousands of people. Kill thousands. Kill thousands, including the king, of course, in case we didn't get that clear. King and queen, okay? 
You're also going to see that there is going to be political, economic, and social chaos. Now, you don't need to know this anymore, but you used to have to know all the different ways. Like, the Jacobians are going to change, like, the calendar. Instead of going from 12 months a year, they make it 15 months. Because the radicals are doing things to the extreme. They also changed the uh, week is now 10 days. Really? Yeah. They also forbid uh, religion. There's no religion allowed in France. Well, what is what happens to be one of the most religious countries in the world? France. They have two major religions. They have Catholicism and they have Protestantism. Both of them are thriving at the time, and they ban both of them. How do you think people are feeling about this? Yeah, they're not great. John? Did they tell you to change them? Uh, yeah, all those people are in it pretty much are dead except for the commoners. Now keep in mind, are the commoners getting killed off too? Yeah. yeah. And how are they killing all these people? Guillotine. So you should know that's a nice piece of evidence for your essays. Now, keep in mind, okay, the people are scared. Poor. Poor. Okay. So, then who shows up? Napoleon. Yes. So, I think we can agree the French Revolution is way more bloodshed than we are, yes? Okay? Theirs is a lot more extreme than ours. Ours is being controlled by the wealthy. The uh, French Revolution is being controlled by the poor. poor. Now, keep in mind, the poor have a lot of anger and a lot of aggression, and that is why it's going to spiral out of control very quickly. Now, believe me, I'm not trying to tell you that the wealthy have done a great job with the American Revolution, but the French Revolution spiraled out. How do you think every other country feels about France? Not good. Yeah, everyone thinks they're a bunch of wackadoodles, which, if you're watching kings get executed by guillotine, you'd be like, yeah, you know, things don't look like it's going so well here. So, your second, your third component is Napoleon. Okay, so, the next major component is Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, a couple things that you should know about Napoleon Bonaparte. He is a French general. Okay, who rises very young to power and takes over takes over France. declares himself what? Emperor. Emperor. Now, I love Napoleon because he's great. Okay? So, now, there's a ton of stuff that's cut out for you, which is wild to me, but here we are. Okay? So, and that is where we are going to end. Now, ladies and gentlemen, did things go well in the French Revolution if we end with an emperor? No. 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 Things are not going to go so well. So, this is something we need to reflect upon as an American citizen, how proud we are that we literally got rid of a king and we have kept the king gone. Can we agree? We're over 250 years at this point coming up on it. It is really impressive that we have eradicated ourselves with a king and we don't have a king. That is what the democratic process has given us. Within four years, they had an emperor back in uh, France. So not ideal. On your whiteboard, let's go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what year did the American Revolution begin? Good, Amelia. On your whiteboard, what year is the French Revolution? Good, what do we got? French Revolution is what, Ava? On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the dude who wrote the Declaration of Independence? If you're gonna give me one name, you give me last. What is it, Emily? Jefferson. Jefferson, on your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the three voting system in France, which will fail? It was only called upon three times, but it will fail. What do you got, Dawson? States General. States General, on your whiteboard, tell me who's the last king uh, of France. We're gonna get an emperor. Emperor and king are not the same. 
Guys, if you don't know, uh, it's ten five one. But On your whiteboard, please, Louis the Sixteenth. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the new legislative branch in France that will replace the Estates General. It is currently there today. Good, Elise. The National Assembly is what it's called, but it is new, which is why I have new. But it's called the National Assembly. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the group of people who will lead the reign of terror? They are the radicals of France. John Jacobian. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is um, what is the name of the structure that will symbolically fall when attacked on July 14th? 
and for the food bank. So it's a great place to offer that right off the cuff. It's a pretty damn impressive. Okay, so. Uh, okay, no. All people, all women can be citizens, but they're not people. Okay, so, the war, okay, you need to know Toussaint, Lady Overture, by the way, it's in the front, by the way, O-A-M-A-R-T-U-R, means rebellion. Rebellion and declares himself sovereign. Okay, so he successfully defeats successfully defeats the French. It is the first, put a star, this is a big deal and it deserves to be recognized. It is the first and only successful slave revolt in history. France is embarrassed. you need to know. Outcome is your next heading. It will be the first black-led country in Western Hemisphere, which is pretty damn cool. You need to know that Toussaint, uh, Lay Overture, I'm sorry, Overture, will be arrested under false pretenses. Know, he gets he's brought under the guise of like, hey, the French government wants to sit down and have a formal sit down and clear up some things. So he goes, dressed as you know, the governor and the leader of Haiti goes to the meeting, they kidnap him, put him on a ship, send him to France, and he gets tortured for the rest of his life. Like you need to all appendages. Yeah. All of them. And eventually dies and dies. So it's over with yes. We got Yeah, they're gonna uh, they're gonna have some, but this is the only successful one. Okay, so you do need to know that this is going to be led by poor people, and you do need to know that this is going to have a negative effect on Haiti till today. So when people are talking crap about how poor Haiti is, why? It's our fault because the French are going to punish Haiti because they're embarrassed that they are the first ones to lose a black colony. So because of that, they're going to say that any country that trades with Haiti can no longer trade with France. So what is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere? Haiti, because no country will trade with it or have equal trading rights to it. Still, to this day. Yep. 
Even in the United States, it's not too full and equal trade with Haiti. Because we would hate to lose some of our rights with the trade of France. So, here we go. So, big things you need to know about Haiti. You need to know the Saint-Louis Overture. You need to know that he is going to organize the first Haitian movement. All right. Here we go. Your Creole revolutions. These are all of your uh, revolutions against the Spanish. So there's multiple countries in here. It's not one country, it's multiple. So here we go. Your Creole revolutions. Creole revolutions are independence from Spain. Creole revolutions are all revolutions from Spain. Okay, so the first ones we're going to talk about are going to be your Bolivian. Bolivian revolutions. And he is absolutely incredible. And we are not, we disappoint him so bad. Alright, so you need to know that he is, he loves George Washington. He writes George Washington a letter, and George Washington responds, and he carries it around with him, and he dies with it in his pocket. Anyway, okay, so the Bolivia Revolution. He's inspired by George Washington and the American Revolution. He is obsessed with the American Revolution, and that is his goal, is to have that for the same thing. This is all led for and by the poor slash indigenous. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, now you do need to know that Simon Bolivar, this is his name, Simon Bolivar, was wealthy and well educated. He knew all about his Enlightenment ideals, okay? And he is going to liberate. This is the cool part. He liberates. So George Washington obviously liberated 13 colonies. He is going to liberate Venezuela first. Why do you think he does Venezuela first? Okay, he's uh, Venezuela, which will be Bolivia, uh, Bolivia, which is named after. going to be Colombia, and there's three others, those are the big ones. Okay, so you do need to know <coughs> he is going to fight Spain directly, and win, that is a huge deal. When he wins, he, they are using the same techniques. They are using spies, and they are using telescopes, and they're hiding behind things in the dark. Guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare. Okay, that's how they win. Just like George Washington. Remember, who does he love more than anything? Okay, important documents. You need to know it's the Jamaica letter. Oh my god, that's where you're going to stand in your picture. Mm -hmm. In your picture room. The Jamaica letter. Okay. Which he is trying to unify. Unify all uh, Spanish colonies against Spain. So that's the major 
Shepard documents, you can make a letter. Okay, major aspects. Okay, he wanted the Grand Columbia, G-R-A-N, Columbia, or to unify all former colonies. Into a federation. Yes. Into a federation, US like. Like, we have the federal government yet? Okay? Never happened. Yep. And they get divided against each other, and that's why we have political chaos today. See ya! Eight vote count quiz today? You did, yeah. Eight period doesn't. Okay, so do I, I have to. You can make it up tomorrow. Okay. Five cards is super easy. It'll be online by tomorrow. All right. Yeah, because I had to put like, one thing double count test. No, you're. Uh, is that what you were doing this morning? Yeah. How'd it go? Uh, I mean, it was pretty easy. You just took forever. Yeah, no, it's no, no worries. Well, it'll be posted online and we should be some books. U.S. life. Like we have federation system. Are you getting ready? Uh, I believe so. Thank you.